Today we have the pleasure of driving Cadillac's newest performance vehicles, the CT4V and the CT5V Blackwing. We're driving them back to back in some of LA's best canyon roads. We're going to rip on both of them to see how they feel in a performance situation and in the process let you know some of the massive differences between these two. There's a lot of great driving and some even better noises ahead, so let's get to it. Dibs, I'm driving first. Oh Alright, I called Dibs and now we're starting in the car that maybe surprised us a little more than we thought we would. Yeah, of course we were expecting to fall in love with the CT5 Blackwing, but this has also been a pretty charming vehicle on this road too. CT4V Blackwing is not getting as much love as it should. Let's tell you about it a bit. This has a 3.6 liter twin turbocharged V6 with 472 horsepower and 445 pound feet. In this case, it has a 10 speed automatic transmission. So with that automatic transmission, it will get you to 60 miles an hour in 3.9 seconds. Three if nine. you go for the six speed, you end up getting there in 4.1 seconds. Uh, we might rather go a little bit slower in this case though, right? I think that's our biggest point as we talk about this car on a fun oh, road like good. this, is that the manual, call it slower, call it whatever you want. We think it'd be more fun. Um, there's just something about this 10 AT it just is missing a bit of sharpness. Let me put it in manual mode for just a second here. It's missing a bit of sharpness compared to something like an M3 uh, or an AMG product. The eight speed ZF and the nine speed from AMG, just they're a little more cohesive. They're a little quicker. They're a little more decisive. This car is more than willing to play and have a really good time, but you kind of have to be caning on it to get that transmission to cooperate. Yes. You can't just be going, you know, five or six tenths, you really have to be pushing it hard. It does this thing called performance shift, right? And that's when it really knows that you're on it and it'll kick down a little bit more aggressively. The issue is performance shift comes into play when you're kind of loading up the corner with some G-forces. But if you're not exploding out of the exit down the straightaway, it reverts back to normal mode and then it'll re-engage performance shift when you enter the next corner. What do we think about the engine node? You know, it's a little, um, what's the word? Maybe a little pedestrian, a little unremarkable. Again, unless you're pushing it. Oof. Give me it a is. downshift coming okay, in the next corner. Three, let's go down to two. Pop, so you hear pop, that pop, 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 pop? Yeah, that's what really makes this thing sound special is that overrun and that burble that you get, which is just such a performance car trend right now, you know? It is not the noise of a V8, and if that is something that is on your list, this might not be the car for you. But I've been pleasantly surprised with how this thing sounds and really how it gathers power too. 472 is a lot of power in a car this size. Speaking of car this size, this is smaller than people assume it is just by looking at it. It's actually in the class of like a Mercedes CLA. Bad news, the back seat space is effectively non-existent. Um, good news, this feels like a perfect size for a canyon carving car. So this has magnetic ride control 4.0. This is the latest iteration of GM's uh, pretty widely accepted and appreciated suspension. Um, the dampers really do a good job of keeping this neutral and planted in corners. It's a little stiff, but it doesn't kill you either. Well, we also have it in the stiffest setting, right. and when you kind of soften it up, either for you know less sporty driving or just driving down the highway, it's pretty comfortable. Other than that, I think the other things that I want to give an honorable mention to here, the tires. This has Michelin PS4S tires, which are, oh, when you get some heat in them, this is pretty much the best of the best. So as this vehicle is spec'd right now, how do you feel about it when you're not cooking down a road like this? We have, I think, what, almost seven grand worth of carbon fiber yeah. all over the outside of this thing. And it is very like boy racer. And actually some small part of me really does appreciate the giant wing on the back of it, but it's a bit dramatic and you don't need to spend that much money in carbon fiber trim on a Cadillac. It also makes it kind of difficult to drive if you're on a bad road or if you're coming into like a gas station driveway or something like that. It does. The it, angles that you have to take these roads mm. on to keep to these driveways on to keep it from scraping is insane. The front splitter is the enemy of driveways, so just make sure you're watching out for that. Um, the, the brakes on this car are great. If there is a carbon ceramic option, I wouldn't worry about it. They've done a fantastic job and haven't given us any fade issues on the road the entire time. Um, and the color, I think, is $695. Deal of the century. I love, totally. love, 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 love 
the color on this. Yeah, and then it also matches really well with this particular interior colorway. And of course, we've got the optional sport bucket seats that I absolutely love. I think they're so comfortable and supportive. I like when I can squeeze into a sport bucket like this and it doesn't punish you, but at the same time, you still know you're in uh, an aggressive seat option. There is the option to go comfy. Don't overlook that if you feel like you don't want to deal with something that's a bit stiff on a long road, but overall we like these seats a lot. Yeah, and if you really are kind of uncomfortable in this seat, you can let the bolsters out, you know, using the seat controller so you can kind of give yourself a little more elbow room on a long trip. CT4V Blackwing surprised me. I didn't expect to like it this much in a lot of different ways. Yeah, the power is obviously, I mean, it's competitive with everything else in the class. You can kind of just trust it to kind of give you a smooth rush of power and not break traction, and it just feels very approachable and enjoyable on a road like this. I don't really feel nervous cooking this thing down a road. Give us a manual and take away some of the carbon fiber, and I think you have an absolute winner. Yeah. So you had your fun in the CT4, and now it's my turn in the CT5, and this is a ridiculous car. You know what? There was so much hype in this car, and I didn't want to believe it. I'm like, yeah, 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 we get it. It's a V8, it's a manual, big deal. I am in love with the CT5V Blackwing. <laughs> and it all comes down to one very good reason, the 6.2 liter supercharged V8 under the hood. 668 horsepower, 659 pound-feet of torque, and when it's equipped with a six-speed manual like this one is, that means zero to 60 happens in 3.6 seconds. And I don't care one bit about the zero to <laughs> yeah, 60 exactly. time, because oh my goodness, is it fun to play with this transmission. <sighs> It really just improves the car so much being able to have all that control over the gears. When you have a little straightaway, show the good people what this thing can do because <laughs> it, okay, it can hold its own in a tight, tight. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and thankful to carbon ceramic brakes that slow it right down. This is a much hairier vehicle than the CT4. It, it feels like it could get away from you at any moment if you just hit a patch of gravel or if you're a little indelicate with the throttle. But, you know, like you said, there is all this great performance traction control and everything like that. And those carbon ceramic brakes that you mentioned earlier that really do an incredible job of bringing this thing down from. I don't want to speed. paint it out like this is an unruly car. It has all of the kit to hang on just tight in the corners, but there is so much power. A 668 is a massive horsepower figure, don't get me wrong, but I really think it's the torque figure. You're in second right now, which is just unnecessary. If you go to third... Yeah, why don't we just pop it into fifth, actually, and see how it does. And you still have so much torque. Yeah. It's unbelievable. 659 pound-feet is just in any gear at any RPM. You have just a reservoir to pull from. That's the power side of it. But the drama you get from it, the exhaust note, the, the pops and crackles with the overrun and the actual stick itself, everything is just so well done. I wouldn't change anything about the powertrain. You brought up a good point the other day. This might be a better car with 100 less horsepower. I kind of maybe wonder <laughs> if maybe they put a 6.2 without the supercharger under the hood, if it would maybe be a better daily driven super sedan. But at the same time, like you said, it would lose out on all that drama and that supercharger wine and everything that we really love about pushing this car hard. So this car is a bit bigger than the CT4. It's also a bit heavier. It's 4,100 yeah. pounds, which isn't egregious. It's not a featherweight by any chance either. Um, other than that, they share some commonalities with this one also has magnetic ride control 4.0. They both have the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. They both have limited slipper differentials. Yep. They're really honestly pretty easy to control and have plenty of grip and reserve. The width and the added wheelbase do make it a little bit harder to place on a narrow road like this, but at the same time, it also gives it a little bit more stability and a smoother ride over some of these high frequency bumps. Driving them back to back, you are much more aware of this car's size. Yeah. If you're aware of the CT4V's size, it's because you like it. Yeah. It, it feels right. It never kind of shrinks around yeah, you a exactly. little bit. This one doesn't ever quite get to that level. But the benefit there is you get quite a lot more backseat room and That's it's true. just a more livable sedan on a daily basis from being able to throw people and things inside of it. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. 
the CTSV from years ago mm -hmm. still sticks out in people's mind as a hero. And this basically is mostly the same recipe with some tweaks to it, sure. obviously. I really think that this will also go down as an automotive great. I mean, it's so old school in the way that it does it too. It's not like it's trying to be this nope. super modern, ultra high tech vehicle like a BMW M3 or M5. This is just a huge lump of V8 muscle in a mid-size sedan and it sounds like a drag strip prepped Corvette. It's just absolutely yeah. bonkers. So knowing that this as equipped is 30 grand more than the car we just got out of, which one would you put in your garage? I mean, my absolute kingdom for this exhaust note in the CT4. Yeah, because I think we're making our own Franken car. <laughs> exactly. I think the CT4 is a lot easier to drive. They dropped this off in my driveway a couple days ago. And I, I mean, I was just honestly scared to drive it for the first time because it's so much power. It's a six speed manual and it's rear wheel drive. And it just felt like a whole lot to handle. I've grown accustomed to it and I actually really enjoy driving it now. It's not quite as intimidating as it used to be. But then again, the CT4 just felt like a performance car right out of the box. You could just jump in and have a great time. So yeah, here's a, an equally confusing way to put it for me. The CT4V is a better car to drive in so many ways, but I have smiled 100% more behind the wheel of the CT5 than I have the other car. What we're witnessing here, Clint, is the end of high performance internal combustion at Cadillac and in the automotive industry as a whole. You're right. And that's kind of sad because this car, the CT5 Blackwing, will go down in history as one of the all time sports sedan grades. It's just so emotive and exciting to drive. And like you said, it puts a smile on your face every time you turn the wheel. You say what you want about Cadillac and changing the names of their cars and how things make sense, how things don't make sense. But these are the Black Wings, the top of their performance range. And we've just had them back to back and some incredible roads and both cars individually and as a whole are phenomenal. Wonderful cars. Wonderful, wonderful cars. For more on the Black Wings, you can be sure to read our story on MotorOne.com and we're going to keep on bringing you great content like this. So be sure to like and subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. Thanks for watching.